Okay, so we have our blind baked pate brise ready to go for our fruit tart. And now all we have to do is assemble it. I already went ahead and made up a fresh pastry cream. I have pre-sliced some strawberries. I have some blueberries right here and some pre-sliced pear slices and my blind baked tart crust. That's pretty much all I'm gonna need except for the final product, the apricot glaze to brush on top of the fruit. Now, I'll wait till the end and we can talk a little bit more about the apricot glaze. Right now, let's focus on the tart and everything that goes into it. A fresh fruit tart, the majority of the appearance of the fresh fruit tart is the fresh fruit, right? The pretty fruit that sits on top. So nice skills are crucial during the, the, the production, the mise en place, the prep, prep work for the fruit tart. You should be taking extra special care to properly slice cleanly and proficiently, uniformly though, right? Uniform pieces of fruit so that when we do place them, they look really, really nice, um, aesthetically pleasing, right? So nice skills come into play here for us bakers, finally, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start assembling this. It is a ready to eat product. Everything is cold being placed on there and then eaten directly. So we are going to wear gloves. We've got our blind baked tart shell here. And the one thing the students always come up and ask is how, how, how do you get it out of the pan, chef? I, I don't know. And then I go, give me the pan. I hold it like this and then put your hand right here and <laughs> pops right out. The bottom isn't secured to the fluted edge of the tart pan. So there's two pieces, okay? It pops out easily for that reason so that you don't have to move or break your delicate tart shell that you spent so much time making, right? So difficult. So we've got our blind baked tart shell ready to go. A fruit tart is a blind baked tart shell with pastry cream filling topped with fresh fruit. Because it's topped with fresh fruit, all the pastry cream pretty much disappears. So are we really worried about making sure that the pastry cream is really, really pretty? Not necessarily. However, I'm gonna try to keep it pretty with my piping bag here. Let's see how it goes. Not very well, right? We'll give it a swirl then. We'll try to keep it even in consistency, even in thickness. A lot of times people get confused with the, the ratio versus a pie from a tart. Thinking about a vanilla cream pie, the crust would be relatively thin, while there would be a large substantial amount of this pastry cream to make a vanilla cream pie. But a tart shell, the ratios are a little different. The tart dough, the pat brise, whichever one you choose, to use is typically at a thicker definition than say a pie. And then your pastry cream, there's gonna be actually less. You don't need as much pastry cream for a fruit tart as say you would for a vanilla cream pie, okay? Typically a vanilla cream pie, you would put all this pastry cream in and you would put so much that it would mound over top. Say a coconut cream pie, it's mounding. Now I can sprinkle a nice amount of toasted coconut over it, make it look pretty. But for a fruit tart, our presentation is from the fruit placed ever so perfectly on top, right? So we're not really too much worried about the pastry cream. Once we get it in there, a nice even layer, we are good to go. And now we can start placing our fruit. And the fruit placement is really what makes up your fruit tart. Is there a specific way to place the fruit on there? Absolutely not. You can place it however you want. This is where we get to be creative. Pick whatever types of fruit you want. Place them specifically though. I'm not gonna just willy nilly randomly put them on here. I have seen some fruit tarts where it, it looks abstract. A bunch of people just put random pieces of fruit. It doesn't look terrible, but a really nice fresh fruit tart, there should be some thought into how you're placing the fruit. I really like spirals or lines, a bunch of different ways, blueberries all in one line, then the strawberries and the pears or rounding things, kind of having a concept in mind, being an artist here. We're trying to make something really, really pretty, right? We've spent a lot of time here. So let's just get in it. Which one should we do first? 
I'm thinking we're gonna start to do the pairs on the outside here, and we're gonna shingle them just a little bit, and we'll see how this looks. Hopefully I have enough pairs. I think I do. We're gonna have these go around the outside of the tarp. My pears are sitting tossed in lemon juice right now. Just like apples, they do start to discolor a little bit. So a little bit of lemon juice is going to help them stay vibrant, and fresh. As well as it gives it a little bit of a tart flavor. It kind of tricks the customer into thinking that it's maybe fresher than it is. I kind of had like a nice spiral going and it kind of messed it up here a little bit, but. Here, we'll tweak those out a little bit. That should be good. We'll keep laying them. The fruit, like I said, though, is the main attraction. That's what everybody's gonna see, right? So taking extra special care to make sure that you've picked fresh fruits and making sure that they stay and look fresh is very important. Going back into manager serve safe, you know, when you should accept and deny an order. If I'm trying to do a waffle bar and make a bunch of strawberry compote and my strawberries come in not looking so great, well, it's a strawberry compote. How great do I need my strawberries to look? They're all gonna be cooked down, right? But if I'm making a fresh fruit tart, I really want the best quality in fruits, right? I don't wanna use something that's starting to rot that maybe got squished that doesn't look as nice. It's soft, just a little overripe. A fruit tart would be where I would take extra special care to select the freshest possible fruits that I can. Hey, it doesn't look so bad, huh? Not too shabby. I'm gonna put one more right in here just to kind of clean that up a little bit. Kind of like the spiral we've had starting to go here and I kind of mess it up a little bit right there but it looks pretty good so we've got our pears around the edges right now and then I'm going to take strawberries but I'm gonna be selective I'm not going to pick the end of the strawberry there I'm gonna only use these slices and I'm gonna lay them out a little bit slightly overlapping the pears and you know what? I'm gonna shingle them. I got so many strawberries, I'm gonna shingle them. I'm gonna make this look extra pretty. I'm going around center there. Shingle. Right, look at that. So we've got our pears, our strawberries. Now I'm gonna take a few blueberries. And place them right inside the strawberries. I'll be honest, I've never done this exact arrangement for a fruit tart before. I'm just kind of messing around, putting fruit where I think it would look pretty. Like I said, there's no set rhyme or reason. Couple questions for your assignment. What dough does the chapter? First question here, I'll start there. First question, what Dough, short dough, pate brisee, pate sable, 
-hmm. puff pastry, any of those, which in the chapter specifically does it say is the best for tarts, okay? We're gonna keep placing some of these. Now, before I filled it, I wanted to mention too, if you are having issues, you notice your pastry cream for some reason is too soppy or you always make these fruit tarts and your, your crust is just not holding up as well as you would like it to, you can glaze the bottom of your tart with melted chocolate. Brush melted chocolate on the bottom of your tart. It will help coat and just kind of hold its consistency a little bit better. Coated with chocolate. Now, any of the wetter fillings won't soak and sop through to the crust. Act as kind of like a coating or protection. I'm trying to use up the rest of these ends of strawberries. Kind of like in a spiral here. They're standing up rather than laying down. Try to give it some height. Make it look pretty. And I kind of spiraled them towards the center now, so. Too terrible. I don't know if you can see the spiral of the strawberries in the middle there. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, so now we have all of our fresh fruit placed. Now we are going to do the apricot glaze, okay? Question number two. Question number two. What type of filling is in a fruit tart? That's an easy one. If you've been paying attention at any form in this video, you would know what the filling is, what's the filling, and what method do we use to make up the dough? What method do we use to make up the dough and what is the filling for a fruit tart? Question number two. Okay, so now we are going to glaze the fruit on top and we are using an apricot glaze. This is actually an apricot simple syrup that's usually used to flavor coffee and stuff like that. But understanding what an apricot glaze is, it essentially is the same thing. What is the purpose of this? The purpose of the apricot glaze is to keep your fruit as fresh as possible. A lot of times people will put these in a dessert case. Think about Publix Bakery, if you've seen a fruit tart in there or those cakes with fresh strawberries on top it looks like they're coated in glass but they're not they're coated in either an apricot or a neutral glaze which is essentially just a lot of sugar the apricot obviously has a apricot flavor and the idea is the large amounts of sugar coating the fruit are supposed to preserve them as fresh fruit sits on top of a dessert like that like this in a refrigerated case the fruit will start to go bad, become overripe, and then start to spoil, and the juices will start to come out of it. They will start to weep. It will sog your fruit tart. It will make it look terrible. And all you had to do was put a quick, simple apricot glaze on the fresh fruit, and it would last an extra couple of days. You're not gonna get a week out of a fruit tart. That's impossible. But you might get an extra day or two if you properly glaze your fruit. How do I make an apricot glaze? Essentially, if I make it, I'll usually buy an apricot uh, jam, something smooth, maybe not a marmalade or a je jelly, uh, a nice smooth jam, apricot jam, and then thin it out with simple syrup. Hot simple syrup and apricot jam, mix it together until you get a nice thin consistency and you'll be able to glaze your fruit. Do you have to use apricot? No, honestly, you don't. I've seen some done with apple jelly. If I was doing a raspberry tart, could I use raspberry? Absolutely. The idea behind the apricot glaze is an apricot is relatively neutral in flavor. So if I put it over top of a strawberry, it's not gonna overpower the strawberry. The strawberry is still the main event, right? 
Same thing with the apple. Apple is a relatively neutral flavor. If I was to make a raspberry glaze and start glazing apples with raspberry, now the flavor of the apple is getting covered up. Do you want that? Maybe you want that. Maybe it's an extra appearance. Um, just realizing what the concept is behind the apricot glaze, okay? And that, I hope you can see it, is how we put together a quick little fruit tart. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't have to be this big. They can be smaller. You can do tartlets, mini uh, fresh fruit tartlets. Um, there's a lot of variations and creativity that can go into this. It doesn't have to be plain uh, filling. It can be whatever, you can flavor the filling inside too. You can flavor the crust. You can stick with what just one type of fruit. Garnishes on top, whipped creams, meringues, glazes, drizzles. You can have fun with this. It doesn't have to be this simple, but this is a standard, just like this, a standard fresh fruit tart, and you should be able to produce one of these at any time, okay? Question number three. Question number three. What temperature did I bake this dough at? What was the temperature that I blind baked my pat Brise at this tart dough. And that's your third question. Please answer all three questions. I hope you had fun. I'll see you guys soon.